Hey guys, so I'm just too going to make a quick video on how to make 50 pips from B1 on a trending market. So I'm just going to use the basics. By the way, our entries are right here. Let's enter right here all the way until the zone. So basically, this is my point of interest where price sort of bounce the first time looking forward for price to push up so currently the price is on 10 5 6 5 if this price moves 50 pips it simply means it will be around 10 6 so it's 65 75 85 95 105 115 so on 6 10, 6, 1, 5, that will be 50 pips. So we'll see if the price is going to move while I'm doing this video as well so that you can see that it can be doable. So without wasting much time, you can see today has been a trading day. That's the first thing. From where the market opened, we just extended that low onto the moving average. Then we started pushing up, right? If you notice something, uh, price is trading above all moving averages. That's the first thing. So we are basically in an uptrend. Uh, we had a reversal here. We sort of hit the zone. So now we want to see which zone is there. So just to show you that it's multi-time frame analysis. You'll see this last high here. It was broken here. Price sort of came back to retest tested uh, then price ran up, extended this high a little bit. So I'm seeing this is momentum in the market. Okay, so be in mind, uh, again, price can still potentially pull back to this area again, or this zone again, okay, before pushing up. But based on the momentum I'm seeing in this uh up moves going up i feel like we're going to have another up move right here so where is that up move going to get us at least 50 pips okay so you can see this is the day's highs so what we need is price to break today's highs uh on its way to reach our target so why are we using the zone um as an end so you switch your chart to a line chart. Okay, we say from the beginning, but from yesterday, you can see after we picked here, price has been sort of creating high highs and high lows, right? And retesting uh broken zones pushing up, coming back to retest broken zones, moving average, uh, and pushing up. This zone is what I was mentioning to be having been tested here. So is price broke this zone and this zone again? Uh, they sort of retesting this area. So that's the basis of this buy setup we have at the moment. So we're looking forward to get a buy, switch back to candles, drop down to M5. Same pattern, we're trading above the 50 EMA, so we're bullish. What we're waiting for, we've entered already. We're waiting for our price to move at least 10 pips from where we entered or from the price we entered. So we entered our price at when I started uh, this uh, recording. 10, 5, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So for our setup to be successful or for our setup to be complete, uh, price needs to get to 10, 6, 1, 5. Now, depending with your account size, just going to break down a few lot sizes so that you understand, especially if you're trading boom and crash. Smallest lot size, which is available here times the 50 pips, will get you $10. Okay. Um, one load size times 50 pips 
that will give you $50. 10 lots times 50. That'll give you $500. Then the maximum full margin, which is allowed on the reef is 200 lots, if I'm not mistaken, which is 50 lots, maximum times four positions to give a total of 200. So the 200 lots times 50 should be able to give us ten k. So the same setup, which is paying someone ten dollars, it's paying someone fifty, it's paying someone five hundred, and it's paying someone the maximum of ten k, which you can get. So for now, let's see if we're going to play out. See if the zone is going to hold. Uh so yeah, basically that's it. Boom and crash. We are trading a setup. A continue. This is basically like a continuation uh, pattern type trade. So let's see how it goes. I think I'll just continue recording to see. So our stop loss is just below the zone. Stop loss is below the zone and it's about from 10.65, to here, that's about 15 pips. So we're risking 15 to make 50, which is like one is to three. So now based on risk, you can now calculate that if you hold from these positions, one is to three, just divide these numbers by three, then you can calculate your risk. So on a small lot size, if you are aiming for 10, it means the risk here is about three. The risk on a $50 account is about 15. It's just plus or minus uh, on a $500 account, that will be about $150. So not $500 account, on a 500 target uh, using 10 lots, that's the risk. Then on a full margin account, your risk is about 3000 or 3.5 plus or minus. So somebody who's risking this and somebody who's risking this, you can see it's the same risk to reward ratio, different account sizes, and uh, you can see what you can actually get. So based on these numbers, we're going to see whether our trade is going to win or it's going to end in a loss. So here I'll just be scrolling through the time frames just to view price on a bar to bar basis just to see if my um bias is going to change as well for this particular setup so again price from morning we've been respecting the 13 ema which we interacted with right now on the same area so looking forward to that push looking forward to the push is yes, that's going to be the third retest of the day if i'm not mistaken yeah so let's see how that goes Uh, for the most part, I'll just be silent. Then I'll just comment if price is reaching any any point where I feel like I need to explain something. But for now, let's see if our zone holds. So our setup is mainly just based on the zone, uh, which has been broken by price here. Let's test it once, second time, possible third time. But yeah, that's our point of interest. Let's see how it goes.
All right, so we've seen another rejection here, or rather price respecting our zone after this one. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Are they going to give us our 50 pips? So again, we just want to be open to what price can do. As much as we anticipating 50 pips up, price can give this pattern here. Okay. For example, price was pushing up, pulled back, pushed up, uh, slowed down a bit, pushed up, then sort of bounced here for a continuation, right? But it failed. Right, the that continuation failed. Then price extended this low, came to this zone, then pushed up. So sometimes a setup can fail. Although the failing zone, again, it's still right on our area, unless of course they want to extend these lows, uh, then potentially they can pull back into this zone, into this area. So just be open to what price can do so that you can avoid disappointment in your trading. I'm just going to quickly check C1. It's still in this consolidation zone as well. So the reason I put this, I mark this, is just to see if my trend is still uh, breaking zones or respecting them and pushing up on, on a smaller time frame basis, just like it's been doing on a higher time frame. So sometimes if I see them violating a zone, it might mean my setup is actually going to fail. So instead of letting my price come to my stop loss, I can cut my loss here which will be break even because we entered here. So that sort of just helps to figure out whether price is still pushing up or not. So I'm going to just wait a few more minutes just to see where this price is going. If there is momentum, I wanted it to push um, so that I can complete this um, video now while it's the setup is complete as well so let's see if it's going to move right now
Okay, so because of time, uh, let's see, I'm just going to give it maybe about three more minutes before I finish off the Zoom. And right, let's see how that goes. In the meantime, while we wait for it, I think I'm just going to check uh, NASDAQ. I was actually looking for buys on GU, but I, I abandoned my setup here. There's something I saw. I realized we pushing down from the high time frame basis as much as I wanted to scalp a buy here. I had to close off my trade. This is the buy I wanted. Of course, they might still play out. But what I realized is I'm still uh, in a downtrend and we can possibly come into this area. So I just thought, let me cut and wait for a better setup to come through. Uh, I just want to check NASDAQ. NASDAQ has been melting since yesterday. FOMC, you can just see my nose there. Just going to remove these. Okay, so it looks like a 330 stock market open. They pushed up to fill in something like a fee value gap or retest or something. Um, okay, this, this was the New York open here. So price took out liquidity there. This is the current New York lows, which can possibly be broken. Drop down to the one minute, see if I've got a pattern. Okay, highest level there, break of structure. Um, bro came back to retest something, came back to retest something. So this looks like a sell emotion. I didn't catch it. But let me see if I can still get an opportunity to get into this trade. Let's see, I want to see first how price reacts with the new close. Then if we can get a pullback, maybe I can consider sales. Just dropping with the price as well. see what they want to do. So on M3, the price looks balanced for me. We've got an order block here. Besides that is balanced until we get to the current candle. So let's see, let's see how it's going to play out. Just going to check this. So from where we entered, we moved about Uh, moved about 16 pips. There is that momentum which I was seeing. They're really not really moving like fast, but let's see how it goes. So you might also consider moving your stop loss from here to maybe here. Let's see how price reacts. So coming back to Nasdaq. So daily, we, we've been on a huge drop. Potentially, we come in here. So that is one of the reasons I want to sell. We also potentially come in here. With this momentum, I would say we are coming down to, let's say, 14,600 area day. Uh, 
uh, yeah, I would say I would love to look for sales. H4, we've got a huge imbalance here. A imbalance there, that's H4 though. H3, same imbalance there. Then we've got a point of interest here. Where price can still retrace to before continuing with the sales. But again, we're saying we can potentially have momentum from the current market price all the way down to around 14,600. H1. So H1, what you also notice is price did not uh, retrace into the previous day's lows. Uh, right here, they didn't retrace to that area. The Asian lows, they also didn't retrace there. So just keep an open mind that price can still want to do this. We can actually get a buy setup if they do that. So yeah, let's just see how they, they play along on on the 15 minute. 15 minutes again, New York high is taken. So that's why we're also trying to lean on an immediate on an immediate sell. So H1 price is still dropping. So I'm just going to mark points of interest here. Price is balanced until here. Then we'll put another order book there. All right, B5, B1000, so it's still on its way. We are about 20, 30 pips away from our target. So let's see if we can get the. So I'm just going to put the lot sizes again so that you understand how to calculate your lots when you're trading the, the boom and crash. So on this particular position, with the smallest lot size, with one standard lot size, 10 lot sizes, and uh, this is the full margin. Full margin is 200 lots. So if you are trading five figure account like 10K and above, you can use this on high probability setup if you are an aggressive trader. Okay, so this is times 50, times 50, times 50, which is our target here. So a person who entered with us at around when I started this video at 10565. 10565, which is somewhere here. This way we entered before this move, right? Price was pushing down. So a person who entered here with these lots. If you're targeting 50 pips or if price plays out the 50 pips at the end of the setup, you're going to have $10. That's one position, right? With one lot size, you're going to have 50. Uh, with 10 lot sizes, you're going to have 500. 
And with the five figure accounts, 10,000 and above, that's where you can do full margin, which is the maximum loss you can be allowed to open here. This trade will pay you 10,000. This is the end goal for everyone who's trading. I believe this is the target. For you to be able to go in with 200 lots. Let's say, for example, you're in max right now and the price is moved 20 pips. So 200 lots times 20 pips, that would actually be about 4K, which is good. You can actually call it a day here because getting a return of this in one day on a five figure account, whether or a six figure account for that matter, it's actually a good return. So you can actually call it a day, call it a week, or whatever, depending of course with you, your region. But yeah, basically this is it. So, First position at 20 pips, right now you'll be at $4. One lot times 20 pips, this one will be at 20. 10 lots times 20, this one will be at 200. And we say this one is around 4K or 4,000 at 20 pips from our entry to where the price is. So, like I explained earlier, this is just tapping into uh, like a continuation pattern and trying to see if we can maximize profits off that move. So others might argue, okay, what's our target? What are we trying to target? Uh, okay, besides the monetary value, let's say we're not talking about money. Where is this price most likely to get to or where is it going? So we just check like our high time frames. We look to our left. So based on the daily, what I have with the way I trade is, you see this area here where this level is not broken? That's potentially where price is heading. But this is also another point of interest I have. Uh, I think it's based on the weekly, but we'll check it just now. So potentially this price is coming to these highs. Which is around 10.655, 10.647, 10 That's the potential target where this price is coming. But with our trading plan, we're saying, Anything from 20 to 50 pips, we call it a day. Okay, anything 20 to 50 pips, we call it a day. On this particular setup, though, I was targeting 50 pips because I just wanted to show you that you can actually catch 50 pips trading these instruments uh, on a daily basis. You don't have to trade everything. You just look for one with the highest probability. Then you can actually execute on it. So this one right now, it looks like it's slowing down a bit. As you can see from this momentum we had, from where the idea originated to where we actually then entered, you can see the past 15, 15 minutes, like 30 minutes, price sort of slowed down. Yes, they can still push up, but sometimes you should understand that price doesn't just like move in a straight line. Sometimes they want to take liquidity like they've done here, they want to drag it all the way down, frustrate anyone who's bought here, come to these lows, then push up. You get it. So this zone for me is very much still valid for buys. So what you do with positions now, which are running based on what you're seeing, personally, I would say it all depends with your trading edge and what type of trader you are and your risk on that particular setup. Someone can be fine with holding until it comes back to this zone and then allowing it to play out. Somebody might have gone in a bit aggressive and they are happy to take the 20 pips if they, it all differs from individual to individual and it differs from setup to setup. So for me, this setup, I'm just going to let it run a bit. I'll now have my stop loss on entry. 
because it's very frustrating for a trade to go into 20 pips, right? Which is something you can actually take and call it a day. Then you see it come back all the way to your stop loss and you end up losing 15 pips. You get it. Yes, price moves in waves, but sometimes you should just be able to, let's say, scale out, get 20 pips, uh, or move your stop loss to break break even like what I'm doing now. So my stop loss now is going to come just one peep above my entry so that if this setup decides to, to pull back, maybe the price is set, set the high of the day and it wants to retrace all the way, take out these lows and come back to this zone maybe, which is here, or come back to this area, which looks like it's the day's lows or something like that. Uh, you want to be able to be taken out and break even without a loss, or you want to take partials, then break even. The end goal is you need to protect your capital. That's the whole point. You need to protect your capital. So this trade, uh, let me see if I can see how long this session has been running. Maybe I can let it run so that we can just see how the setup eventually plays out. So that you guys can see 10, 5, 6, 5. Okay, our entry is there. So my stop loss is now right here. At the same time, you'll see that the stop loss is actually on an order block. These are all the things you need to like uh, see in hindsight. So maybe you might want to put your stop loss like the way we said, removing our stop loss from the original area below this zone and putting it somewhere in here. That could work because it could be it will be below this last order block here. But it all depends. But for now, personally, I'm having my stop loss on my entry. Then if I get reason to enter again here, I can still get my buys with the same targets as well. So that's just like part of trade management. But this setup, I wanted to show you how to catch 50 pips trading boom and crash. Okay, see 300 today. I didn't trade it, but yesterday we had this zone marked out. This played out. They came again. This played out. They came again, extended here. We, today we didn't look at it at all. I just marked this and I was looking for a potential retracement here, but price continued to melt. So there was no execution there. C5, been eyeing it for possible sales. You can see my markings there. Uh, they might still sell since we are in a bearish order flow. As you can see here, lower highs and lower lows. So what's my point of interest? Uh, it will be this order block here. It will also be this order block here where price currently is also lining up with the 50 EMA. So if I get a rejection here and a pattern on a smaller time frame, I will still consider sales on this particular asset. C1000 is been in this consolidation zone. So until it comes out, we don't have a trade there. Then B1, that's the one we own. B5, we were looking for buys earlier. Uh, the level failed to hold. If you see, I was looking at this. Price came, I was anticipating this. Price it didn't do that. So this was a failed setup. You can see they've extended the lows. They are back into this level here. So I'll just see, maybe they want to extend the lows, then set another pattern. Maybe we might trade a retracement back into the downtrend. As you know, bees, the booms, we only buy the crashes we only sell. So I might look to, to either buy the retracement of the sell or to buy the continuation of whatever is going on here. Because this looks like it's, an, it's a range now. So price might still do this. But as long as the setup is going to offer me 20 pips or execute jump. I haven't really been trading it, just been like keeping tags just to see how it's going. I'll definitely be considering trading it in the near future. So I think, yeah, hopefully today's, uh, the session was insightful. Maybe you picked one or two things which you can use, especially on trade management and load sizes. So yeah, this one, I want to see if I can mark it so that when we have a, fu a future session, I can still 
talk about this setup. So I want to mark 10, 6, 1, 5, which is something there. Just estimating here. Okay, it's somewhere there. So I will resume any other time when I have a session. I will, I might talk about this setup, but you can see price sort of slowing down here as much as it is pushing up. So you just need to make sure you manage your trade accordingly. This is a point of interest here where price can come to push up still this one and still the buys from CMP. All right, guys, so if there's anything you want us to touch on, whether it's currencies or it's synthetic indices, especially boom and crash, just hit me up on the comments. Then we can uh, talk about those uh, things. So let's just check. Oh, uh, what's this again? Uh, Nasdaq actually decided to push up all the way to this order block. But uh, let me see if I can get something to use. Okay, so based on M15, I don't have anything to use. I would still love to see this current M15 close. Maybe we might consider taking buys, going back up to this high or to this moving average. We'll just see what price does. But again, that's a session for another day. So I hope this session helps. Those I was sharing with this setups, I uh, hope you caught something. But for today, in terms of synthetics, I feel like we're done. This is the last setup we have. So we'll just see if this zone holds or this one. But I'll definitely try to do another follow-up video just to show you how this trade eventually played out and to just explain price action in terms of the views we had at this current point in time. So enjoy the rest of your day. Good trading.